Hi, this is Russ. This is uh, part 14 of a series of videos that go through section 6.3 and 6.4 of the 2024 edition of NFPA 921 to go through the various tools that are used for forensic fire investigation. Uh, this particular video focuses on plume generated patterns as defined in section 6.3.19 of NFPA 921. So plume generated patterns, typically they're not useful for small enclosure fires involving flashover. The thing to keep in mind with that is as soon as you go to flashover, you're gonna chew away a lot of the unique demarcated lines or boundaries associated with a small fire next to a wall, for instance. Uh, patterns are demarcated lines from a fire on a 2D surface. So uh, picture a 3D fire and you're projecting that 3D fire on a 2D surface. That's what we're talking about here in terms of plume generated or uh, heat release rate re heat release rate generated patterns. So such demarcated patterns, uh, they'll have the cross section of a fire shape uh, can be based upon heat release rate, uh, dimension of fuel and distance from fuel. Patterns form when exposed to minimum pyrolysis temperature or suit conden sit condensation temperature of wall. So what's meant by that is there's two forms of heat transfer applicable in this situation. One's convective, one is going to be uh, radiative. So the radiative is a heat, heat release rate. It's kind of like the sun when you feel the sun on your face. That's a radiative effect. So uh, radiation, thermal radiation, carries energy from a, an emitting source to a receiving source, and that receiving source has mass. And if that, that heat transfer continues, that mass will warm up. There's a, a lag or a transient period because of the mass, because of the absorption of energy into that mass. And it takes a little bit of time, but once you hit that temperature, the mass hits a certain temperature where it basically it off gases, it decomposes. That's the term pyrolysis, that's what's meant. That's, that's the temperature at which that mass is going to start having a change in color and demarcated lines associated with the uh, heat release rate from that fire. The other thing that you could see is if the plume is in direct contact with a, a, a vertical surface, you're going to see plume lines from soot deposition, basically a condensation process, because the wall is going to be cooler than those hot gases emitted by the fire Consequently, the wall is going to cause those hot gases to condense and deposit soot. So it, such events, um, if the fire is substantially away from a wall, you can't have those kind of depositions on, on a wall. So this we're talking about fires in close proximity to a wall. So there's a few different types of plume generated patterns. One is a V pattern, and it's most typical. Uh, picture a trash can fire, a small incipient fire. It's about a trash can size. Uh, defining incipient, it means you can still approach it without being overcome by, um, get, by smoke. So a trash can fire next to a wall, um, it's going to leave a V pattern as shown on this image to the right. But you can tell this V pattern, it points to an origin. So it's a very useful tool in identifying where uh, f uh, fire, at least um, whether it's the original fire or a subsequent fire, but it's going to point to a location that burned. So here's a different kind of, uh, uh, it's an inverted code pattern. It's a different fire generated pattern. What you have there is the fire basically, it's, it's very small. And Part of the issue with a V pattern, a normal V pattern, is you have the smoke interfacing with the ceiling, creating a plume jet. Basically, it, it causes the velocity to go down and the width of the fire at the top to spread out. So that's the mechanism for, at least a partial mechanism for that V pattern. Uh, v pattern fires follow a standard uh, 22 degree profile. Um, it's defined through uh, observations as the width of the plume is half of the height in general. Now there's some variability, but that's a pretty much across the board. What you'll see, uh, unless there's other obstructions, uh, buoyancy effects, uh, you're going to see that that basically that 50% width versus height. 50% of the height of the, is the width, uh, and that gives you about a 22 degree pattern. So a 22 degree pattern. 
So normally that's the kind of pattern you'll see in, in fires, large fires. But if you have a small fire, uh, it, like this image in the right, what you have is the fire, the width is, is defined here by this width of the base. That's the width of the fuel involved in this fire. But it's just not a very hot fire. So it quickly peters out. It doesn't create a plume jet uh, that goes up to the ceiling, creating a ceiling jet. And it may be fair, it's fairly short-lived, uh, very low heat release rate. Here's another interesting uh, fire. It's an hourglass shape. So what you have here, and if you analyze this, it's kind of interesting for a few different reasons. It's, it's probably an ignitable liquid that was on the floor. And what you have... Um, the very nature of hot gases, they entrain air. So Bernoulli's equation, when you have a, a fluid, so air is a fluid, when you have a fluid at a given velocity, it's, it's going to actually entrain air. And it, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger because of that. But the other factor is, especially with a fire up close to a wall, because the wall keeps air from entraining on the wall side, it's going to actually have a hotter plume that's going to result in faster and a more accelerating plume up. And that, you could tell when a fire is right against a wall like this image, um, if, if you have an, what's called an axisymmetric fire, like in the middle of the room, you're going to have air coming in from all sides. And that's where you get that nice 22 degree uh, representation. But when it's up against a wall or against a corner, you know, a corner, it doesn't allow that air entrainment. You have hotter gases, consequently faster uh, a buoyancy effect, faster velocity of your gas plume. So in this case, what you see happening is you see this necking down a very wide fire, most likely a pool fire, just looking at this, wide fire, hot, that um, air entrainment pulls it in, it hits the ceiling, spreads it out because the ceiling is going to basically create this obstacle that causes a ceiling jet to occur. So that's the effect. That's how this, this, um, this fire pattern occurs. So it, min, it, it indicates, typically it indicates the fire is very close or in contact with the wall. Um, if you look too on the left side of that fire, you notice more of a curve than the right side. Seem to indicate, once again, this ventilation effect uh, where air entrainment's occurring, but seem to be more air on the left side than the right side. The right side almost looks a little bit more straight up. So clearly there's some imbalance in terms of available ventilation from that fire. Um, the other issue is a U-shaped pattern. This particular fire, most likely from a couch, uh, you know, wide base, hot fire. Um, but basically you're, you're going to see the V, the U, the, um, the hourglass, these are your standard profiles that you're going to see. So you pat, you shaped. A lot of times it can be a pool fire. I like I said in this case, I think it's probably more like a couch. Um, it, it may indicate fire was located farther from a wall. So when you have a V shaped, it's a very clear demarcated line, both from HRR heat release rate and from soot. Um, when you're farther away, the heat flux has softer curves, resulting in more of a U pattern. Uh, so you can look for that as well. Two exact uh, fuel packages at different lengths away. One might give a V pattern. One might give a U pattern. So something to consider. Um, so let's go through the pattern stages. So your initial fire, small incipient fire, it's going to be an inverted cone. And it, it will be left there uh, when it's suppressed. So if you're able to catch a fire earlier and there's a small fuel package associated with that fire, you're going to have a, a, basically an inverted cone. It will, if there's enough fuel and you don't suppress it, it will transition to either a V or a U or an hourglass as the HRR increases. Typically, the base of the imprint on the wall for the fire pattern, it's going to be the width of the fuel to about 2.5 times the width of the fuel. And unfortunately, once you hit flashover conditions because of the intense heat, um, the, the flashover is when the whole room erupts in fire because of that, that reflection uh, from the various walls because energy is reflected back in. You're going to lose those patterns from pre-flashover conditions. So this tool, this tool for plume generated patterns, it's not very effective for post-flashover conditions or trying to do forensics after flashover. 
Um, so I appreciate your time. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns about what was stated, please include those in the comments and I will respond to them. Thank you.